Hello there, my RPG lovers, and welcome to another video. Valheim is the game that took the Steam by surprise. Even though it's been in early access for just a couple of days, it managed to gather a huge player base and overwhelmingly positive reviews. To be honest, I didn't hear anything about this game until a few days ago, and I usually don't cover survival games. But Valheim is a lot more than just another survival game, and I'm really glad I decided to try it out. It has some meaningful RPG elements, amazing open world, and really pleasant visuals. Another thing that's really interesting is the state of this game in general. If I didn't know it's in early access, I would probably never notice because it runs flawlessly and a lot of the features in the game feel polished. It's definitely one of the most polished early access games I ever played, along with Mountain Blade Bannerlord. It's kinda weird using the word polish when talking about early access games, but there you go. Anyway, I'm going to talk about my experience with the game, what it has to offer, and should you consider buying it. The main reason why I personally can't really get into survival games is the lack of a proper single player experience. I prefer to play single player RPGs, as most of the people who are following this channel already know. Valheim allows you to play in single player mode, but that was only one part of my concerns. Even if some survival games have the option to play in single player mode, it's not hard to tell when the game is not meant to be played like that. Well, I can tell you right away that Valheim is quite enjoyable even if you're playing alone. When you start the game you have the option to play in co-op with your friends or online with up to 10 people on one server. I created my world and started playing alone. The world map in Valheim is procedurally generated each time you create a new world, but I had a hard time to believe this at first. Simply because the map in this game is really well done and it doesn't feel like it's procedurally generated. For some reason, whenever someone mentions procedurally generated, I immediately think of some painfully generic open world map. But the world map in Valheim is far from that. Anyway, I wanted to test how this actually works, so I made a couple of different worlds, which I visited with multiple characters. You have the option to create a new world and play it with any of your characters, which I found really interesting. Hopping into different worlds with the same character could be a common thing in survival games, but I wouldn't know because I don't really play them a lot. And yeah, as soon as I entered the new world with my new character, the map was completely different. Well, actually, the terrain and the object placement is completely different, but it's technically the same map. You always start the game in the middle of the map in the same zone. The way the map is designed is perfect for creating a strong replay value, which this game undoubtedly has, like many other survival games. What it also has are great visuals. Valheim has a cartoony pixelated art style with low polygons, but it's highly stylized. Whoever was in charge of the graphic style in this game should get a raise. The game looks absolutely stunning most of the time, and it was hard not to stop every once in a while to take a screenshot. While the art style is pretty good in general, the lighting and different weather effects are even better. The same place on the map can feel completely different depending on the weather. And of course, the game has a day and night cycle on top of all of this. The nights are not completely dark like in some other survival games. You can still see where you are going most of the time, even without a light source. The sunset is probably the most beautiful time period in the game, but it's also a good reminder to prepare yourself for the night. And then we have the great soundtrack, which makes the atmosphere even better. Although after a long play session it can get repetitive, because there is not a huge amount of tracks in the game. When all of this comes together, the atmosphere that the game creates is absolutely amazing. Valheim has a lot of survival features that you would expect to find in a game like this, but it's trying its best to avoid potentially annoying mechanics. It's not a game where you can die of starvation, but you'll still want to eat and stay warm because of the negative effects, or rather the buffs you get from those actions. As soon as you start the game, you get a brief history lesson about the world and how things work. Valheim is obviously completely inspired by the Norse mythology. There is a crow that will appear to explain how things work each time you discover something new. Your main goal is to eliminate the major threats of this world in order to be granted access to Valhalla. That basically means that each major zone in the game has a big boss fight. This gives you a nice dose of motivation to actually work something towards to instead of just trying to survive in the game. Taking down those bosses is the ultimate goal, but as you would imagine, there is a lot to do in the game besides that. 
you obviously start off with nothing, but it won't take long before you learn some basic crafting recipes by just picking stuff up. One of the first things you're going to learn is chopping trees, unsurprisingly. Even this mundane activity can be pretty fun to do because there is some nice attention to detail here. If the tree falls down on a nearby tree, it has the chance to bring it down as well, which looks and feels really satisfying. It can also do damage to your character or nearby enemies. I think it's really important to make these repetitive activities as fun as possible in a game like this, and fortunately Valheim seems to do a good job when it comes to this. But these activities become a lot more enjoyable when your skills go up, which brings us to that RPG element that I mentioned. Valheim uses improve on use system, which means that almost every activity in the game has a skill behind it, and you can improve them by just performing those actions. Running, jumping, using different weapons and similar activities in the game all work like this, and it's done really well. I'm actually a big fan of improve on use system in RPGs, and I made a video about this topic in 2020, so you can check that out if you're interested. The sense of character progression is really decent in Valheim because of this, and it's not something that I would expect to experience in a survival game. The other side of the progression system in Valheim is obviously the technical advances that you work towards too. This includes gathering all kinds of resources, crafting and improving your base and your equipment whenever it's possible. I think the game does a good job when it comes to teaching the player how to improve the tools he needs to progress further, while not trying to hold your hands. This is because it presents those features with a step-by-step -step approach. For example, you start off with a workbench that you have to improve in order to make certain items. And it's really easy to figure out how to improve it, as long as you have the appropriate materials. That's actually the harder part, but it's also really fun because you'll have to explore the map and gather the materials. When it comes to building your base, or whatever you want to call it, you can basically do it anywhere on the map. But you can also frequently find abandoned shacks and houses which usually need to be repaired. So you can decide to stick with those places and just improve them however you see fit, or you can do what I did. I wanted to build my place from scratch, and behold, the greatest piece of engineering that you ever saw. Amazing, I know. By the way, this is actually the best way to wake up in the morning. The snap-on mechanic is reliable, but it could be more responsive in some situations. Anyway, you can go crazy with your base, as long as you have the materials. Just remember not to build your roofs too low and thank me later. When it comes to the combat, Valheim uses the stamina system for basically everything. All melee and ranged attacks, dodging, blocking, running, swimming and sneaking. But even so, it's not extremely aggressive because regenerating your stamina is not that hard, you just walk around without performing any actions. The combat in general feels pretty decent and it's fun, even though the animations are not that great and attacks can feel a bit stiff. There's a decent amount of different weapon types and you will find at least one that you like, I guess. The bow is really fun to use and there's actual stealth mechanics in the game as well. You're really hard to detect when you're sneaking, which can be really useful. It's not a really punishing mechanic, so even with a low stealth skill, enemies will have a hard time detecting you. But sneaking also uses stamina, so it's a balanced trade-off, I guess. I like how all NPCs explode when you kill them after a few seconds, it's all dissatisfying. The game also rewards you for timing your blocks, which is like a parry mechanic. It's really useful to learn, because you can't rely on spamming your dodges all the time. Overall, I'm enjoying the combat for now, and I'm experimenting with different weapon types. If you're having troubles with large packs of enemies, you can pick a weapon with a high knockback stat, or go with a long range weapon. But fighting weaker enemies can feel like you're playing a hack and slash game, actually. While some stronger enemies and bigger monsters will definitely require more attention from the player. Death mechanics in this game are really similar to other survival games. Upon that, you will drop everything you have from your inventory, but you can get your stuff back if you return. However, if you die again, I think you lose the stuff you dropped forever. Your character respawns in the last bed that you slept in. Nothing too crazy, I guess, but it should motivate you to always be careful. Here are some more things that are worth mentioning. You will have to manually mark the locations on your map, because the game only shows you some major locations. So, for example, if you find a dungeon or an interesting place, it's best to mark it as soon as possible. It's really simple to do, but it makes the exploration a bit more rewarding. I think more games should do something similar to this. 
the world map has a fog of war, which means that you won't be able to see the terrain of the map until you explore it. And did I mention the size of this map? It's crazy. The only major complaint I have is the quality of the UI. It's the only feature in the game that feels unfinished. The crafting UI is decent at best, the inventory UI is really basic, and the game doesn't have a separate screen for the equipment. And just the whole user interface in general feels like it needs a big facelift. But anyway, I'm really satisfied with the single player experience so far and I would recommend this game to almost everyone. Like I said, I'm not a huge fan of survival games, but when they managed to offer a really decent single player experience like Valheim, they got my full attention. The co-op mode is probably a lot more fun to play and I'll try that out as well. I really wanted to see how the game holds up when playing alone and I know that a lot of people are curious as well so I hope this video helped a bit in that regard. If you liked the video, pressing the thumbs up button would mean a lot. I might do some more videos about this game so stick around if you want to see that and maybe check out some of my other videos. Don't forget to subscribe for more RPG content. If you want to support the channel in the long run, consider becoming a Patreon or a YouTube member. You can get your name on the end credits as well as some other perks like early access to videos, Discord roles, my plans for future content, etc. etc. That will be all and I'll see you in the next one.